So I'm here with Tim from Eversholt Rail and we're here today to talk about the VLR. It's the very light rail vehicle, is it? That's right, Chris. Um, this is the Rail Live debut for the Revolution VLR uh, demonstrator. Um, we finished building it in August last year and it actually did some initial trials here just after the last Rail Live. Uh, but since then it's been spending its time on a dedicated test track facility yeah. at the former Iron Bridge Power Station regeneration site where we've already had over 330 external stakeholders from national and sub-national transport sponsors and wider interest groups across the industry and across the community yeah. and we're thrilled it's been brilliant here as well we've had huge demand and in fact uh, on the recent runs that the vehicle's done we've we've been fully laden That's good. Uh, which yeah. is excellent. excellent it's been yeah there has been a lot of interest i've already uh, been on it myself so it is a really good project but we'll we'll take a closer look uh, inside i'll have to show you some shots of that so uh, but it is a real good product yeah, we feel it's a product that's absolutely appropriate for, for this, this challenging uh, and, and yet uh, full of opportunity time for the railway. Um, the government's recognised the need to reconnect uh, a lot of rural communities who, who haven't had a rail service or decent public transport connections for some years. Shifting uh, transport from cars to rail is essential to meet the UK's commitments to net zero by 2050 and revolution we feel is, is a very good way of contributing towards that. Uh, it, in, in essence it has the capabilities and quality of a, of a heavy rail vehicle but is substantially lighter so it, 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 the demonstrator you, you see behind me uh, weighs just 24.8 tonnes. That compares with around 41 tonnes for a traditional heavy rail uh, self-powered single vehicle. Yeah. So it's a, a, a weight saving of, of, of 40% and that manifests itself in savings all the way through the, the, the lifetime of the product. Uh, it requires less energy to propel it. Yeah. Um, it causes less wear to the track and infrastructure on which it runs and a lot of the future railway schemes are likely to involve some extension uh, or, or reinstatement of, of lines where they've previously been removed. Yeah, and actually, with a light sorry, of... Sorry, sorry. I was just going to say, because it, it says very light rail vehicle, but it is a very much a heavy rail uh, vehicle. It's designed for heavy rail routes. It's not just designed for... Absol know, absolutely routes. right. Um, that the whole thing is, is about operational flexibility. Yeah. On quite a few branch lines across the country, heavy rail diesel vehicles are operating. They're coming towards the end of their lives. They're not particularly efficient uh, and they don't provide the quality of passenger environment that people are seeking. If we're going to draw people to the railway, their whole journey experience has got to be good. And you know this is a component of a total public transport system yeah. so what you know at one end you could see people joining uh, a, a rural station maybe from a from a uh, an on-demand car service or a, or a bus they do the rural journey on something like revolution and then they join the mainline rail network and it's key that they get similar quality of service provision and, and environment throughout that journey. So they will expect now, because their cars already have it, to have air conditioning, good connectivity, uh, the ability to charge their mobile devices so they don't have phone or, or other, other device anxiety. Yeah. Uh, and the, the journey experience is consistent then. Because yeah, I mean, uh, you'll see from the shots inside, it really is quality inside. You know, it is. It's comfortable. You say it's fifty. What was the capacity? It's fifty-six seated 56, passengers. But it's not cramped, is it? You know, no. Considering we, the size of the vehicle, it is. Um, it's a, it's just under nineteen meters long, which is a bit shorter than the traditional heavy diesels that currently operate uh, on the UK network. 
but those 56 seats have comfortable leg room, they're well padded, they have armrests, um, we can mix uh, airline style seating with bay tables according to, to the need. We've purposely designed the vehicle to be very flexible in terms of interior configuration so you can mix and match, you can put cycle storage in, lug luggage storage, different types of seating and a different mix of bay to airline and so on. Uh, and the flexibility and the modularity also extends to the propulsion systems. Yeah. This, this one has uh, twin hybrid power packs, so uh, a Euro 6 2.8 litre Cummins diesel engine driving a generator and, and cooling group and that provides power through the batteries which are 30 kilowatt hour lithium titanate battery packs through to the electric drive motors on, on the, the powered bogies. Mm -hmm. uh, but equally the, the layout of the power packs underneath the vehicle not only is it very easy to uh, in, install and remove them in, in service when they're required for maintenance, it's very easy to reconfigure. So this is a hybrid. You could equally well have a battery only version with the ability to be charged uh, on the route, either at, just at the end stations or in between. And we're working very closely to optimise that to make sure that the whole system is efficient, reliable and above all affordable. Okay, well thanks very much for your time, that was great. It's a real pleasure, yeah, it's thank really, you. It really is an impressive unit, I'm uh, glad I got the opportunity to ride on it. Well it's, it, it's, it's exciting to it be is. here and, and it's great, getting passenger feedback is really important to us because it helps us to refine and improve the design hopefully next time we're talking we'll be committed to a production run yeah that'd be great so yeah thank you very much for your pleasure time. thanks right. chris cheers so that's the revolution vlr uh, obviously evershot rail are the kind of lease of the owners and they're going to lease that if they uh, get picked up by a service operator hopefully they will i'm not just saying this because tim was really nice to give me a, a long interview and really passionate about and really passionate about the unit but they are actually looking at it inside they're a fully formed unit ready to go on the on a network well i was going to say main line but more more likely a branch line or a reopened branch line or something like that just for short trips like tim said you just take a local train one of these onto a main line station maybe just as a as a feeder more than anything but yeah the interiors really are nice they've got air conditioning they've got those usb charging points and i think they might have 4g connectivity as well and it's actually a pretty good looking uh, rail vehicle as well much more attractive energy efficient and just all round nicer than a class 153 which i guess is the closest current uh, equivalent 